Just to go back to 9-11 Commission for a second, it sounds and appears like yourself and Democrats don't trust Republicans to take this seriously. You're, it seems like you're concerned about the, the makeup, you're concerned about the speeches still about that. Is that true? I don't you're, think that's true. I certainly, there are some uh, members of House Republican leadership, some, as well as some members of the House Republican conference who have given us no reason to be trustful of them with respect to approaching this in a manner that simply allows for the commission to follow the facts, apply the governing law and the Constitution, and let the truth emerge wherever that falls. But notwithstanding whatever skepticism that some may have, as Vice Chair Aguilar pointed out, the speaker presented an initial framework to Leader McCarthy to get his take on how we should approach it. This is the beginning of a dialogue that ultimately will turn into a legislative product that goes through an extensive process where Democrats and Republicans will have an opportunity. But the guiding principle remains. This should be done in a bipartisan fashion. That is our intention, and that is, I believe, what will ultimately occur. Go to the left, and then we'll go to the back. Senator Durbin yesterday kind of made an announcement on the House schedule expecting the Act to pass the Durbin Thomas Act and the farm, um, the farm related immigration bill, which I understand the name of. Um, do you guys expect to start moving some immigration bills here soon in pieces like that? And would you want to do that before breaking? I have, great, uh, you know, I have great respect for Senator Durbin, but I think that the Senate's majority whip is probably not necessarily the one in position to lay out what the House schedule is going to be. On these issues, I'm going to yield to Vice Chair Aguilar because he's been working um, extensively and has been one of the leaders of the caucus on immigration. Of course, Linda Sanchez uh, as well, and she's doing a tremendous job, but um, I think we haven't had that conversation. We had an initial presentation from Congresswoman Linda Sanchez during last week's caucus meeting on the immigration bill that she introduced, and you know we'll see where it goes from there, but we're at the very early stages of making decisions. We have, as the chairman mentioned, we have great respect for, for Senator Durbin and, and his contributions uh, and his continued work um, uh, on these issues. Uh, I believe later today, the majority whip Clyburn will send out a whip question uh, to the House Democratic Caucus about the United States Citizenship Act uh, carried by Linda Sanchez, carrying the Biden uh, White House proposal, which mirrors uh, the Senator Menendez uh, proposal as well. Uh, that will be the question uh, uh, in front of House Democrats, and we are beginning the process, as the chairman mentioned, uh, to educate our colleagues and to talk with them about the importance of this piece of legislation. Uh, this is a reform bill. This is acknowledging the White House, the Senate, and the House all acknowledging that we have a broken immigration system that desperately needs to be fixed. It includes components uh, that would protect uh, DREAMers, uh, TPS holders, uh, DED, uh, as well as the uh, components within the agriculture worker community. Um, previously, uh, the Dream and Promise Act and the Ag Worker Modernization Act uh, both passed with strong bipartisan support. Uh, if those came up on the House floor, I would imagine a similar result, but the question before us is whether we are ready to vote for and advocate for the U.S. Citizenship Act, um, which uh, would be, uh, which would transform uh, the system, uh, make key important decisions, and so we're going to continue to have those conversations, um, uh, colleague to colleague, uh, to better understand uh, what's in the, the Biden White House Menendez Sanchez bill, and to um, ensure that we uh, have strong support, um, but. Uh, always keeping in mind that we do have strong bipartisan uh, options uh, available as well. Thanks. Thank you, sir. What 
what are you telling members about the security posture on Capitol Hill? How much longer uh, the fencing in particular will remain up? Uh, that's the topic in, in one of the hearings this week. Uh, what are you learning from, from the security leadership, from your own leadership, and then what are you hearing from members on the question of the, the posture up here? Well, it's my understanding that at this point we're waiting uh, for General Honore to complete uh, his survey of the situation that currently exists in terms of the posture, the needs moving forward, uh, as well as perhaps uh, some understanding as to what the gaps and vulnerabilities were uh, that led to the violent mob attack on the Capitol on January 6th. Once that um, report is ready, there'll be some mechanism to uh, brief the caucus, and then some decisions are gonna have to be made in partnership with the Senate and this, of course, should be done in a bipartisan way. The police board, of course, is a structure that currently exists. And, and so there are a variety of different stakeholders that will have to be involved in this discussion. Uh, but the safety and security of staff and members is paramount uh, for the speaker, for every single member of House Democratic leadership, uh, because we saw how close we came to an even greater tragedy and the loss of life as part of the effort to halt the peaceful transfer of power. Never again can we allow that to take place. So clearly improvements are gonna have to be made, but I agree that the most appropriate step at this moment is to wait until General Honore completes his report. Uh, 